What's up, y'all? We are gonna finish off the quick set video with the oddball quick set or the locks that are not necessarily quick set, but they use a quick set key. And in that video, I'm gonna show you something about a smart key lever handle just cause I missed it cause I didn't have one and now I do. And one other quick set knob style with no visible screws, that's right how to get it off the door. They're not made anymore as well. Thank goodness, they were only made for a short time, but that does not mean that there are not hundreds of thousands out there and you do run across them every so often. So let's get started with the remainder of the quick set. The ghetto quick set. The, I don't know, I'm kind of brain dead today. I'm not, I don't feel very humorous. So to start off with, we're gonna take a look at this funny quick set that has no no interior screws, no retainer to like take the knob off and to remove it from the door. You will see a couple of notches in the face plate on both sides. So what you can do is you can put it, sometimes you can just pop it off with your hand, but sometimes you do have to come in with a screwdriver like this and kind of pop it off from each side. And once you do, rosette stays on there and you will see this funny looking little arrow i don't know what you want to call it mechanism or whatever and it even has an arrow on the arrow it's shaped like an arrow and it has an arrow on the arrow if you take it and you just take your screwdriver and you may have to hit the bottom of the screwdriver you know to make it move if you go up all the way boom slips right off now that guy what it's doing is it's it's rotating these little tabs so that it catches in here. And this just removes like regular Phillips screws. You just loosen them, twist this a little bit to get the screws and then take it out. And of course, push that to get the knob off the door. To put it back on, same thing in reverse. Make sure this is all the way up because it won't go back on otherwise. So make sure that's all the way up slip it on you know half moon half moon right there push it in make sure it's in all the way and then we're going to push it down watch yourself here because you can stab yourself uh at this point it starts tightening down and almost always you kind of i took a, another my phillips screwdriver and just kind of whack it a few times and that's it snap your cap cover rosette in and check it so that's how that works and we're going to briefly go over this style of lever that uh kind of uses this weird little system of set screws obviously on the inside you can see the set screw but when you when you unscrew it right instead of it backing out it actually goes forward it's reverse threaded screw and lets you slip off the handle so we're gonna tighten it and it's actually gonna come out and go through the hole on that when you're putting it back on. Also concealed screws. So once you get that off, you just pop that off. And just like our uh, quick set style the other day, yesterday, put it in, turn it, and it snaps on. These are actually a little bit beefier. Some of the models were. They actually, instead of having a thin metal, had a thicker metal capture system. So. I don't know what generation we're on right now. I'm not gonna go buy a new one just to see. This one is fairly new. And on the outside handle that just fell on the ground, it also uses a really weird screw system, which is missing here. So once you put it on, your smart key cylinder is held in with that little wire clip, like we talked about in the smart key video. You push it in and when it's in the unlocked position, the spindle actually has a hole in it. So you, you look right there where the, where the screw or whatever is supposed to be, you don't see anything and you're like, oh, it's missing a screw. In actuality, you push it all the way through and when you tighten it down or unscrew it, it moves the screw that's on this side in and out. And again, if it was in the locked position, the Allen wrench is not allowed to go through. If you took that spindle out, there's actually a hole in it. So when you turn it that way, your Allen wrench is allowed to go all the way through it. So you don't even need to take this off the door. You do have to have it in the unlocked position as with anything, but that is that, slip it back on, 
go through in the unlocked position. Now one very curious thing about this is because of how it works, if the screw is not tightened in or loosened, if it's not all the way tight, it backs out and it keeps the key from turning. So if you put it back on the door and your thumb turn doesn't turn all the way, or your key doesn't turn both ways, or if you get a call about that, then all you have to do is go in there, tighten the screw down, because it got loose, and, and then you're done. It usually fixes the whole problem. All right, so we're gonna move away from that. I'm gonna go ahead and show you the video from that other style of quick set lever handle here. All right, here we have a quick set lever, and the only one I've got right now, and you'll see there actually is, see that slit right there? So that is typically used to pop off. It's called a retainer. We're gonna get into it when we start talking about defiance and such, but typically when the handle, no lock by the way, if it's in the locked position, no lock that you, that's out there will allow the retainer, whatever type it is, to depress if it's in the locked state. On these quick set levers that have that flat style retainer, it does not. It will push in like halfway and it kind of tricks you into thinking you're like, oh man, maybe, maybe I don't have to take this off. But yes, you do have to take it off. And when we get into Schlage and all that, there are other locks out there where the key has to be turned and unlocked. So even if we look at this, turned, unlocked, still doesn't come off. You have to take that spindle out. If you remember from the other quick set video, the spindle, the spindle is what's blocking that. So this has to come apart just like any other quick set so there's no need to rehash that but basically you have to kind of force your way in it's a little bit tricky to get this guy in and in fact it sometimes is easier just to use a straight screwdriver to push that back and hold it in while you pull your spindle out just like that now instead of popping it out like we did you know the other things now you just uh now you just push that in and there you go there's your regular quick set cylinder all the other quick sets we have defiant we have gatehouse there's lsda comes in a quick set keyway master master door locks now nowadays now even comes in a quick set keyway and I already said defiant lsda and gatehouse so there's and, and there's dozens and dozens more a lot of aftermarket stuff some amazon stuff nowadays is all quick set keyway so on the knobs typically you don't have to take them off the door it does have to be in the unlocked position and this i believe is a defiant some retainers are directly at the three o'clock and nine o'clock position some of the earlier versions of those were actually at a and off like you have to look on the bottom see how this would be more at now not even six o'clock it's kind of like at a i don't know what whether it'll be 5 30 position some of them are on this side some of them are on that side it's really dependent on a whole lot of factors and in that case almost always you don't need the key to remove them but you do have to turn the knob one way or the other so if you just take a flashlight it's good to have a pocket flashlight which I didn't say was in the tool, wasn't in the tool section. I don't think it was, but yeah, pocket flashlight because it's always dark on the bottom. And then just turn your knob, and eventually you'll see. See how that retainer just surfaced? So when I'm at the door, I grab it, hold it, get a poker. In this case, a smart key removal tool. Push it in while I'm pulling it out, and while I'm pushing with my fingers that way. Boop, boop. Now, one thing, if you're taking these off at a door, go ahead and remove it. You know, you can leave that on the door, but go ahead and have a flathead screwdriver so that you can pop this off and drop the cylinder out. Always be cognizant of this because some of these doorknobs, if the cylinder, go, the cylinder can go sideways in the knob and it is hella hard to get apart to get the cylinder to come out. It's like a game of operation. So I always take it out of the knob if I have several to do because it can certainly drop down in the knob if you're not aware of it. Some of them had this extra cap. This style 
It's not often seen anymore, but you do have to pry this cap off a little bit. Boop, just like that. And then your clip, which you can remove any which way you want to. Typically, I'll kind of block it with my thumb here and, uh, and then just kind of walk it around just like that. Okay, I got pressure on it and then come around and then grab it and pull. That's how I do those. Now, here's a, I want to say this is a Defiant, so it just, you just poke straight on it. You don't have to turn the knob or anything, so you just come up. And this, this I believe, is the newest style. I think they got away with, from the oddball position. So anyway, easy, poke it. This is the style of knob where it can go sideways. So I always, again, take it off and leave the knob there at the door. Take the cylinder with me and you see there's no extra cap on this one. That's how they are now. So once again, take that. These can be a little tricky to get off. You can, of course, do it with, you know, a pair of pliers, just like this. A little bit awkward to do, but sometimes it helps. Or even, uh, sometimes I'll use my retaining ring pliers. If I have my pair out here, just like this and use the pegs of it to kind of walk it off just like that so that's how you get those off same way with their deadbolts it's a gatehouse now we see here this is actually i gave defiant and gatehouse a little bit of credit they came up with their own style of latch most latches you see from the off brand are going to be this plus cross style but uh, they 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 did away with it and that's because they were having trouble with their single cylinder tailpieces bending you will frequently come up on a deadbolt and you look in there and you try to pull the deadbolt out from the latch and it won't happen because a lot of these cheapy brands the deadbolt from using the thumb turn actually twists up into a figure eight and you have to take a pair of pliers uh ideally like linesman's or something because that gives you a lot of torque when you're coming straight on and you have to untwist it with a pair of pliers to even get it out the door and it ends up being like spaghetti. So one of the brands, Gatehouse, came out with this new style of uh, tailpiece to avoid that. But again, it is just a simple matter of walking the clip off. Now, now on the deadbolts, it is considerably harder because you can't get your, you can't get your thumb to stop it. Uh, sometimes, there, there it did, so not bad but sometimes it's kind of hard to get in there and that's where you might want to have your retaining ring pliers or any other things that you feel comfortable with pushing clips off you're not really prying you're more just pushing and uh it does get in the way there so it does and you can't push it off that way it has to go straight off up or down uh, and one might wonder about these clips. There is a flat side and there is a rounded side. You may notice this as you re in and wonder which way is right. Well, I've seen them factory installed both ways. You know, that has a round, and really this is just from, this is just from, uh, you know, the production of these clips. I, I guess they're probably stamped out of metal, you know, in rows of a billion. And, and I've seen them come from the factory both ways. But it, it's really dependent on the lock. You know, some, some people say have it so the flat's up and the rounded's on that side. It's all a matter of the lock. You, you may take it off and put it on exactly like it was before and the key may not come out. You can always tell because the key won't come out easily. So if that's the case, take your clip off, flip it upside down and put it on the other way. It may work better. Some of them were screw retained. And basically, there's this spring behind this little pin right here. I think we briefly covered on this. In that case, you can push down with a pair of tweezers and just unscrew it. And uh, tailpieces are timed differently, so sometimes you can't just take this and go to a different one. These are designed to work in conjunction with where they're drilled here. So what's, what's happening is this half cutout this shape is allowed to turn from that point and stop. So it's basically stopping on that pin. It's a stop pin, I guess you could call it. They always have a spring in there. Now I'm to the point now where I've got enough extra stuff where I typically, if I've got a bunch to do, I won't drop the 
spring out i'm just very careful i don't ever turn it upside down because it can for sure come out by itself and get lost uh it really depends if i tap it and it doesn't come out then i'll just leave it and as i'm rekeying i'll sometimes hold my finger over that hole as i dump the pins out uh, uh other ones are the you know the cross style tail pieces when you're putting them back on the door if you have a double cylinder like this one side has to be horizontal when you're putting it in and the inside or the other side has to be vertical for it to go through one of these latches now one good thing about these cross style latches is they are fairly compatible with each other and i say i say that because most of the time so if you have a broken you know what is this uh, defiant maybe if you have a broken one of these and all you have is lsda latches yeah, it's gonna it's probably gonna work across most of the cheapy quick set style locks but one thing we'll go ahead and take this one off because it is uh it's got a key here it looks like so we're gonna go ahead and take this guy off and look at some of the plugs when you get into these uh these aftermarket locks you're gonna see a lot of hot trash in the plugs different things like slits going down okay so here we have to don't try to take that off. That's where your hollow plug follower comes into play. And that's why not all hollow plug followers are created equal. So you definitely have to have your hollow plug follower to get into that. Don't try to pry off this cap or anything. That's ridiculous. Look at that. There's one with slits all the way down it. Uh, that is a production thing. And, uh, I, you know, I never understood why they did that. Probably to, probably to clear chips faster. It really comes into play when you start re and master can these guys because you go to drop your little thin wafer. Whoop, okay, drop another thin wafer in and, and it goes sideways and it rolls down the channel and then gets wedged in the back. So you do have to uh, be cognizant. See, there it goes. See, up to a certain size of wafer will just roll all the way back. So you do have to make sure it goes in the right area. Uh, and we'll shim uh, LSDA. Nope. Yep. Shim this guy. Yep. Okay. Just just to shim it. We gotta shim something. Gotta shim it. Pretty corroded in there. This one may be okay enough to shim without lubricant. Let's see. Okay. There's five, four, three two and one take that out run it through same way that's probably the same brand shim lsda see the difference in a drilled plug versus a whatever they want to call that kind of plug so if you see that it is completely normal for the cheaper brands of locks for it to have that open slit going all the way across it you will see all sorts of weird stuff with plugs sometimes. The more you do it, the more you think to yourself, oh my God, I can't believe they did that. Why would they do that? Some of it holds up well, some of it doesn't. So there's just a regular plug compared to the slit style. Uh, yeah, I think that's it really as far as, you know, all the aftermarket stuff, poking retainers, with, that's all I can think of anyway. Of course, there will be those super oddball things like apparently Amazon now has a new lever handle that I'm going to try to put my hands on so that we can take it apart and see what's going on with it sometime or another. But uh, some of that stuff, apparently you have to literally disassemble the whole lock. It really throws a hitch in things when you price, when you price quote somebody over the phone. Uh, so somebody came in to get a Schlage key made, which is gonna be the next set of videos. Schlage, we're gonna start in on it because I'm freaking tired of quick set. I think I've repeatedly mentioned that. Thanks for watching though. Hit that thumbs up. Stay tuned for Schlage and then Wiser and then, and then we're gonna delve off into the light commercial stuff eventually, even though this is called residential locksmith. You, you're eventually gonna have to deal with some commercial stuff. But anyway, thanks for watching.